Hello, and welcome to KPMG's Investment Management Perspectives. Today, we're going to talk about how asset managers can win with ESG and sustainable investing. I'm Matt Giordano, Deputy Practice Leader for KPMG's Public Investment Management Practice. And with me today is Tanya Carnegie, Global Lead for Private Equity and Asset Management for KPMG Impact. Tanya, last time we spoke, we talked about regulatory issues that asset managers should consider for ESG funds. Just to get us started, what constitutes an ESG or a sustainable investment fund? Thanks, Matt. And it's a great question. As you noted in our first conversation, we don't yet have a standard regulatory definition of ESG or sustainable investing. So this, you know, combined with you know, various terms that are being used interchangeably, you know, including responsible investment, you know, it creates a lot of confusion. You know, in particular in the market more broadly. So, you know, as an example, uh, the Forum for Sustainable and Responsible Investment defines sustainable investing as an investment discipline that considers environmental, social, and corporate governance criteria to generate long-term competitive financial returns and positive societal impact. And, and many in the industry align around this definition. But there's also um, related strategies um, such as ethical investing, which are more exclusionary strategies that people sometimes conflate um, with, with sustainable investing. Um, impact investing is becoming increasingly popular, which is a different approach again. Um, you know, that's an investment approach that really focuses on you know, generating both financial return as well as social or environmental impact you know, by investing in companies that are providing solutions to social, social or environmental problems through the products or services that they offer. Um, as I mentioned, you know, responsible investing is another term that's used very commonly. Um, and then we've got, you know, asset managers that are, are talking about ESG integration, which is just, you know, considering material ESG factors as part of their overall investment process and applying this to, to all of their portfolios. Thanks, Tanya. And I find that really interesting, right? If you kind of look back at ESG and social environmental investing, if you were to look back 10 years ago, it was really that filter that was being used. And I, I really enjoy the shift from filtering out bad or non-ethical investments to looking for something that's more environmentally or socially focused and, and friendly. I think one of the big questions that we hear from advisors is how do they continue to win market share and, and how do they gain um, investor trust and access to this sort of investment platform? Yeah, and, and there's a few fundamental things here. Um, you know, earning trust, I think, is really critical um, and, and quite frankly, fundamental to any investment relationship, full stop. But you know, one of the key ways that you can do that is, is by providing a really clear explanation of your approach. Um, first and foremost, and, and I, I love how you said this in our, our previous conversation, this is about saying what you do and doing what you say. Um, this is about you know, providing a really clear definition um, and, and communication of your approach in a way that makes it easy for investors to understand what you mean um, how you're using certain terms, I mean, how this will influence your approach to investing. And when it comes to disclosure, it's really important for investment managers to be clear about how they're using ESG as part of their investment strategy or, or their investment process overall. So really, you know, demonstrating this transparency, you know, authenticity of approach, you know, these are some of the key things to earning trust. Yeah, again, I think that that's really a great point. And that's something that we see our regulators look for too when it comes to transparency. So it's it's both from our regulators and our investors, and it's very important in this space. So how does an advisor ensure that it's demonstrating the transparency and authenticity that we talked about and also educating investors as to, as to what they mean when they use terms like ESG or sustainable? Yeah, demonstrating transparency, you know, comes through disclosure. Um, you know, when we see a number of, you know, asset managers really, um, you know, gravitating around some of the, uh, you know, reporting and disclosure mechanisms that are out there, um, 
I think it's a really interesting question that you're asking about um, investors um, and, and how to be engaging them, because you know, this is a space that has gained quite a bit of popularity to, to, to make the understatement uh, of, of the year so far. Um, over the past few years, um, as you noted, it's evolved leaps and bounds um, from, from where it started. And where a lot of people, you know, have that original um, notion of, of this being exclusionary. So, so as it is growing, as it is evolving, um, as reporting is maturing, as, as the regulatory landscape is maturing, there's a really important role that asset managers and fund managers in particular have to play to make sure that the, the public, that, that the retail investors that they're looking to engage have a, an understanding so that they can make informed investment decisions, you know, which also is really critical to, to building trust. As, as much as we've seen the interest of retail investors increasing, we've also seen you know, the types of questions or the skepticism that they have about um, approaches uh, to sustainable investment. So for example, uh, they may see um, a company included in a fund that doesn't align with their view of what um, a sustainable uh, company looks like, so they will they will question that, um, or they will see that you know proxy voting doesn't align um, with expectations. So this is now starting to raise concerns about you know opportunism. Are are we are our fund managers just just labeling their product in order to attract more investment? Um, or greenwashing. And obviously, these are, are very serious concerns, you know, not just for a particular fund manager, but for the industry as a whole. Those are some key items that folks should focus on, right? So you start out, you earn investor trust, um, you earn the market trust, you, you help educate your investors through really disclosure and what are you investing and ensure that in ensuring that they understand that there may be certain investments in this fund that don't exactly line up to to what they're thinking right because it's a fund it's a pooled investment vehicle but it's really about disclosing it um and and i think that that's very important like you just mentioned so you know we've we've earned the trust we've educated folks the biggest question now is how do you differentiate your fund right you're an asset manager how do i gain market share and how do i make sure that um my fund is best in class as we've been discussing, this has become uh, a very uh, popular space, uh, you know, both from, uh, you know, growth in the amount of investable assets that have moved into this space over the past few years. Um, and then accordingly, the, the amount of product that's available. So, so it's pretty busy. Um, but that said, um, it's also a rapidly evolving space which we think you know, presents a really big opportunity for fund managers to, to demonstrate some leadership. You know, alongside um, all of this growth, uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, social and environmental issues, you know, they're increasing in severity, as well as our understanding of the link between social and environmental issues and their economic impact. This is having a, a tremendous um, effect on the business environment. It's, it's disrupting the status quo of, of how business is being conducted, you know, combined with, you know, the broader uh, pressure that we're hearing, you know, from the public at large that they expect different from the business community. And we see this um, around, you know, the rise of stakeholder capitalism, you know, as an example. So, so there's a lot going on. Uh, the good news uh, for investment manager and and quite frankly, the opportunity for investment managers is really leveraging the tremendous influence that they have on how companies, you know, prioritize, you know, some of these critical issues related to sustainability um, and ESG through engagement. And that's interesting, right? Because there's different ways to engage. And we talked a little bit about proxy voting. And my view on proxy voting is it doesn't show the whole story. You can see whether a fund manager is siding with management or not through the voting process, but you really can't see how interlocked they are and how they're working with management to achieve um, the, the goals that are important to a sustainability type fund. So I always think about that as one key metric. But it, it's it's a place where we will see investors and advocate groups look to to see how how the fund is voting. So 
definitely you need to keep that in mind. It's a great point, Matt. The way proxies are voted, that's an outcome. And there's an awful lot of engagement, conversation, negotiation uh, that goes on uh, before the, the actual event that uh, a lot of people may not realize. Great point, Tanya. So you had mentioned earlier about the space becoming crowded and there's more and more funds that are being launched that are sustainable or ESG type funds. If I'm an investment advisor, where do, where should I focus my efforts and what types of funds should I launch? You know, when you think about some of the transformation of wealth and where wealth is moving from one generation to another, we talk about millennial investing. Where do we see the opportunity? To start off, in, in thinking of this as a as a busy space or a crowded space, I, I actually think that is really good um, because I, it reflects um, investor demand. It reflects the need um, of of investors and businesses fundamentally to be thinking about how they can be uh, contributing solutions to some of the social and environmental challenges that we're having, which are obviously resulting in economic challenges, which are very disruptive um, for business and, and society as a whole. So, so I think all of the interest and activity in this space is really good. Um, and as more investors um, are interested, whether it's from the next gen or, or you know, the retail investment community more broadly, the more investors that are interested in this space and focused on this space, you know, that is going to be driving investment dollars, you know, that is going to be, you know, contributing to the shift in the way that companies behave, which is ultimately creating a lot more choice. And not just thinking about the way companies manage their own environmental footprint or how they treat their employees or incorporate inclusion and diversity as, as part of their um, executive um, management team and, and board and, and their, their teams more broadly, but thinking about, you know, opportunities that companies have to be addressing these social and environmental challenges through the products and services that they offer. So now we're getting into um, a, a, an emerging area, in particular in the retail investment space, which is impact investing, um, which is another, which is an area of growing interest. So. So I guess that the short of it is the reason that there's so much activity in this space is because there's so much opportunity. And, and going back to where we started this conversation, I think some of the fundamental things that are, are really going to differentiate fund managers do go back to, you know, being clear on your approach, you know, really having that strong, trusted relationship, you know, with your investors, because as this space um, is maturing, um, as as opportunities are continuing to proliferate, you know, investors are going to be looking at, you know, who do I trust is really giving me um, the best advice, the best investment opportunity I, for the best value. Um, so I, I think it it all comes down to those a few of those fundamental things. Thank you for your insights, Tanya. They've been incredibly helpful. And for our viewers, we'd love to talk to you further about ESG and sustainable investing. You can reach out to Tanya or myself at any time for more information. Thank you.